Who knew that we could recognize the 1920s and American engineer Frederick Taylor as the first point in history where there's thoughtful intention in the design of the office space? Looking into our roaring 20s and 2021, what do we see as our working environment? We're hearing the anticipation of a hybrid environment, combination of work from home and in-office time. Why is in-office time important? Even if we're in the office, but not experiencing a one-on-one -on -one or a team meeting, studies show that the mere fact that we are sharing space with another human being is healthy and needed for us to feel humanly connected. We've all learned in this past year that the human need to belong is in an important need. And at work, it's actually an intrinsic motivator. If we apply Maslow's hierarchy of needs to employee engagement, belonging and connection at work is classified as the safety we need for ideal engagement. So by being in the office, we can actually accomplish three things. One, those impromptu water cooler conversations, which give us the opportunity to seek out opinions and input, which became really formal during the pandemic. Two, it's much easier to build workplace friendships, a key ingredient to make ourselves feel happier, more fulfilled, and more likely to stay. And three, allows for more collaboration and teamwork, which is essential for us to have access to the people we need for better problem solving and for ingenuity. Looking forward, as we begin to take off our masks, do not underestimate or turn down that opportunity to get back into the office. It has a lot more positive benefits for our emotional and ultimately our physical well-being than just getting out of the house. Matt, what are your thoughts? Thanks, Kimberly. What a fascinating coincidence that the modern office space that we know was created in the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, and here we are recreating the workspace in our Roaring 2020s. I've particularly enjoyed watching the evolution of meeting behaviors online over the course of the last year. For instance, in pre-pandemic meetings, there were people who sat at the head of the table, some sat in the back of the room, some spoke up, some didn't. In the virtual meeting environment, it kind of serves as an equalizer of sorts. For instance, in gallery mode, everyone appears on the screen and every individual gets to arrange the other meeting participants as they wish, which is very different than taking a seat in a physical room. And since there's only one audio channel, I find that people tend not to interrupt each other and people are allowed to finish their thoughts. In the virtual meetings I've attended generally have a moderator to serve as traffic controller so people aren't speaking over each other all the time. So going forward, I hope the good behaviors of virtual meetings migrate to in-person and hybrid meetings. I noticed in pre-pandemic hybrid meetings that people who joined online could be overlooked or minimized. So how will we incorporate the techniques of pure virtual meetings and ensure that all participants feel included, whether they attend in person or online? I'm excited to see how we'll collectively recreate our meeting spaces in the roaring 2020s. Twana, what do you think? Thank you, Matt. So whether we're focusing on the ideal workspace design or that optimally included workforce, we see that the Roaring Twenties was considered boom time for big business. Experts predicted there is change in the air. President Calvin Coolidge declared, the business of America is business. More immigrants, more African-Americans, and more women were entering the workspace. We see large scale movements from the rural areas to the bright lights of the big cities. Factories sprang up everywhere as workers had to work long hours for low wages and installment plans rule daily decision-making. You see that innovative installment plan meant you did not have to wait long for those highly coveted kitchen appliances or that new car. These changes created a shift in the power dynamics of big business. So come with me to the roaring 2021. Change again is in the air. After a shuttered 2020, businesses are beginning to come to life. Workers are demanding better working conditions, signing bonuses and pay raises. So yes, change is in the air. Leadership must confront these changes if they want to remain relevant in the workplaces. So leaders, what are you going to do to confront this shift in the power dynamics of big business?